We know when you find the volume of a prism or a cylinder, the formula is basically the same, right? It's volume equals the area of the base times the height. Okay, now what you can think of, okay, let's take a look at the cylinder one first. You can think of a stack of coins, for example. So say you had a bunch of coins like this. Okay, and just to kind of visualize with me for a moment. Imagine if they are stacked up like this. A bunch of pennies, right? Or dimes or nickels or quarters, right? So if you were to take the stack of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight coins, right? And if I was to go over here and push these over here and line them up, do you think that when I go to push them over here that they would be the same height, taller, or shorter? Well, if you said the same height, you're absolutely right. Because when I go to push these over, see the height of each coin is just, you know, whatever it is, right? So it's like, it's like they're just um, sliding horizontally. So if we go ahead and do that now, see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight. Okay, so my drawing isn't perfect, but if you can see, if you were to slide these over, they're gonna have the exact same height. So when you think about the volume, you know, the volume of each individual coin is the same. You know, we're not stretching it or compressing it. So if we take the volume of all these coins added up, it's just gonna be the volume of one coin times eight, the volume of one coin times eight. So it's the same volume. So long story short, you just find the area of the base, but what you want is you want that perpendicular height, okay? The height that's to a right angle to the base. So over here, what we want is we want this height right here, which should be the same as this height over here. They're exactly the same. So let's go over now to um, this uh, diagram here. So we've got a square prism, but it's oblique, okay? It's on an angle like this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the area of the base, which is four times four, that's 16, times the height, which is eight. And so that comes out to 128 centimeters cubed. Okay, for the cylinder now, okay, same thing, we wanna find the volume, it's the area of the base, but the base is a circle, so what we want is pi r squared times the height. Now, sometimes they try to trick you a little bit, they give you this angled height here, okay, 13, we want the perpendicular height right there. So you can see by doing Pythagorean theorem, we have five squared plus h squared equals 13 squared, five squared plus h squared equals 13 squared, so that's 25, plus h squared equals 169. Subtract 25 from both sides. We get 144, and if you take the square root of both sides, you can see that height is 12. So let's go ahead and put that in there. We know the height is 12. We know that the radius is half the diameter, so that's 2.5 squared times pi, which is 3.14. And if we multiply that together, let me go ahead and do that. Uh, uh, let's see, I don't have my calculator handy with me right now, but if you multiply those together, that's gonna give you the volume. And it doesn't matter, again, that it's on an angle like that. Just make sure you get that perpendicular height and you've got it. So I hope this helped you know how to understand working with oblique cylinders or oblique prisms. Subscribe to the channel. Check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. And I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.